Let's talk about steady state or equilibrium solutions. So often, the effects of initial conditions are transient. This means that they vanish as time tends to infinity. And in particular, if the time derivative of u uh, vanishes as time goes to infinity, so in other words, if it tends towards a constant state or an unchanging state with respect to time, then the system will tend toward an equilibrium, and that equilibrium will be governed by a boundary value problem. So in other words, we're just going to be left with an ODE in the x variable and corresponding boundary conditions, and it'll be the boundary conditions that sort of uh, govern what things look like in the long run. So let's take a look at this. So if we start with uh, Dirichlet conditions, um, <clears throat> then let's see. So our, our heat equation is ut equals uh, diffusivity times uxx, and so uh, being directly, that means that we are going to fix the value of u at either end, so let's see, so suppose we've got some initial condition uh, ux0 equals f of x, but we're not really going to care about it because it's going to get washed away as time goes to infinity, and we have some boundary conditions, uh, we fix u at um, one end to be, uh, let's say, T1, temperature 1, and we'll have U at the other end to be fixed equal to temperature 2. Okay, so those are our boundary conditions, and again, it's uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions because we're fixing the value of U. And then we look at what happens when we take um, time tending to infinity, and in this case, uh, since we're assuming that ut tends to zero, then the PDE is going to look like uh, this one by the time we're done. And, and then since k is a positive constant, this means we just need to solve ux, sorry, uxx equals zero. So let's see, so uh, this is a simple enough equation that we can solve it just by integrating. So we integrate it once, and we get uh, ux equals some constant. And then we integrate it again, and we get that u is going to be some constant uh, times x plus some other constant. And then we can actually work out what those constants are by using the boundary conditions. So um, from the first one, we have that t1 is u at the uh, left endpoint. Um, and <clears throat> so this is going to be the same thing as what we get if we evaluate this formula right here at x equals 0, where we're going to have c1 times 0 plus c2. And this equation from right to left tells us that uh, c2 is equal to t1. Then we also have the other um, uh, boundary condition. So t2 is u at the other endpoint which is the same thing as C1 times L plus, and then we just figured out in the last step that C2 was T1, so let's make use of that data. And so then that tells us that uh, C1 is going to be, let's see, subtract the T1 across, and we have T2 minus T1 over L. And so all this together tells us that our solution, our, our steady state solution, so let me call that U sub infinity because sort of looks like the opposite of an initial condition when I write it like that. Um, so this is going to be then um, t1 plus t2 minus t1 over L times x. And so that's going to be precisely the uh, linear function that interpolates between, so if we have, say, here's 0 and here's L, and we have time, uh, sorry, we have temperature t1, and temperature t2, then it's going to be exactly this uh, linear function between them. As you might expect uh, in an equilibrium situation for uh, temperature in a bar. So, or actually, that sounds totally wrong. I should say temperature in a rod, because otherwise you're going to think I'm talking about the temperature in the pub downtown. Um, so let's see. So we've got also Neumann conditions, and so things are similarly interested here, uh, interesting rather. So let's look first at the insulated case, so homogeneous Neumann. Um, <clears throat> so in this case we've got uh, ux0t 
and ux lt are both going to be set equal to zero. Um, however, we still have the uh, general solution c1x plus c2 as before. Now, this time, since we are looking at um, the, the Neumann boundary conditions here, we're going to have to differentiate um, this uh, uh, solution that we found. And so we see that uh, u sub x is given by c1. So from our boundary conditions, that tells us then that c1 has to be equal to 0. So the upshot is that our uh, equilibrium solution is just going to be a constant value. OK, so what is the value of that constant? So to find C2, well, let's note that um, the total amount of energy in the bar at the very beginning, so the initial energy, has to equal the final energy. And for that, I'm just using the fact that um, it's, it's insulated, right? So no energy has left. OK, so let's look at these expressions. So the initial energy, that's going to be the um, integral over the bar of our initial condition, f of x. And then the final energy, uh, well, that's going to be the integral over the bar of our equilibrium solution, u, which we just found out is c2. And on the right-hand side, this is, it evaluates to uh, c2 times l. So that tells you, dividing the L across, that C2 is uh, 1 over L times the integral from 0 to L of f of x dx. And then you remember that the interpretation of this guy is the um, average of f on that interval. So that makes total sense. In the equilibrium case for the insulated bar, what happens? Well, in the long run, uh, the temperature is uniformly equal to whatever the average value should be so that it's a constant. Um, if we look at a non-insulated situation, so, uh, well, first off, if, if ux0 t is not equal to ux lt, then what does this mean? Well, suppose uh, the value is larger at 0. That means that energy is coming into the bar faster than it's going out. So what's going to happen? Well, the net energy in the bar is going to be increasing. It's impossible for there to be an equilibrium solution. It's just going to get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. OK, so and, and similarly, if the inequality is reversed, it just gets cooler and cooler and cooler. So in this case, there is no equilibrium solution or, or no steady state uh, solution. So let's consider what happens when um, these guys are the same and they're both equal to some value, say alpha, some number. Okay, so then what happens is heat is now just moving, in, say if alpha is positive, heat is moving into the rod at zero and out of the rod at L and at a constant rate. And so eventually your equilibrium function is just going to be this um, uh, a straight line with, with slope alpha. And that's your equilibrium solution. 